In this video, we're looking at seven properties in the open countryside. These properties are not in the green belt or a conservation area. In every case, the householder is appealing against a condition applied by the council that removed certain permitted development rights. The first case is, in the words of the inspector, a modest cottage in a modest garden in the Shropshire countryside. Approval was granted for a small area of agricultural land to be converted to a domestic garden. However, the approval included a condition that, that removed permitted development rights for freestanding buildings within the curtilage of the dwelling, and also in respect of fences, gates and walls. Upon visiting the site, the inspector saw no clear reason why permitted development rights for outbuildings should be taken away from the previously existing garden. As for the new part of the garden, the extensive hedge planning along the new boundary was considered to be sufficient to screen outbuildings in that part of the garden. And in any case, views of such outbuildings from the lane or local footpath would be seen against the backdrop of the existing garden. The inspector judged that the condition was not justified on loss of amenity or on character and appearance grounds. The council reasoned that the condition would ensure that adequate private open space is retained within the curtilage of the building. The inspector didn't agree and stated, it is for the occupiers to decide the disposition of the private open space that is used or retained within the area permitted. The appeal was allowed. The next case is a converted barn. The application was approved subject to removal of permitted development rights in respect of all extensions and outbuildings. The inspector considered that adding single and two-storey extensions and dormer windows could cause significant harm to the character and appearance of the building despite wider public views of the site being limited. However, the inspector was less convinced about curtilage buildings having an impact, even though they could end up reasonably large and to some extent affecting the setting of the barn. So the appeal was allowed to the extent that the condition was amended to remove only classes A, B, C, D and G. This development is a new detached house with double garage set within a relatively generous plot and largely surrounded by open countryside. The approval removed permitted development rights falling under classes A to E. And the inspector considered what developments might be possible if this condition were removed. Because the property is set back within its plot, there's limited space for a new rear extension. A side extension, limited to a single storey, would not result in significant harm to the openness of the area. These extensions would leave ample garden space. With regard to outbuildings, the inspector looked at the shape of the plot and concluded that a large, prominent outbuilding might take out too much of the existing garden space. The inspector decided that permitted development rights for outbuildings, Class E, needed to be removed, and the appeal was allowed on this basis. Compare this decision with the following one. The development is a large detached house with triple garage, located within a rural settlement. The council's reason for removal of permitted development rights is a desire to maintain the appearance and character of the development. The inspector's main observation is that it is not an especially sensitive location, given the generous size of the plot and the distance to neighbours. The appeal was allowed without any editing of the classes. I find it curious that the appeal decision provides very little explanation. For example, there's no observation from the inspector on the appearance and character of the development. What about views from the road? What about views from neighbours to the south? What is the impact if large outbuildings were constructed to the southwest? 
I would have liked a more complete treatment of the possibilities of development under permitted development rules, just like the inspector did in the previous case. On this property, planning permission was granted for a replacement dwelling, subject to certain permitted development rights being removed for alterations above 4 metres in height. This condition was applied to safeguard the character and appearance of the locality. The inspector considered the condition necessary to ensure that the property did not become more obtrusive in the landscape. This is a view taken from Tootill Road and you can see that the condition would indeed prevent increased obtrusiveness. The appeal was dismissed. Here's a thought. Would the appeal have succeeded if the householder had planted a few trees on the curtilage boundary? Possibly. This is a single storey timber building located at the rear of a plot in a countryside setting. It has permission for conversion to a two bedroom house, relocated further forward in the plot to provide space for a rear garden. It's not what you might say is a pretty site. There's a commercial operation on the southern boundary and a derelict plot to the north. However, there's plenty of screening. Approval for the development was accompanied by the removal of permitted development rights under classes A, B, C and E. And the council pointed out that without these conditions, there was the potential to add side extensions, rear extensions up to 8 metres deep and an array of outbuildings. However, the inspector pointed out the blanket removal of permitted development rights was unlikely to meet the test of reasonableness and necessity. There we go again with the term blanket removal, this time for four of the classes. With regard to roof alterations, the council did not identify how they might impact the area or impact the neighbours. The inspector considered that execution of permitted development rights were unlikely to have a significant adverse effect on the visual amenities and character of the area. As there was no clear justification for the condition, the appeal was allowed. For the seventh and final case, there's no photo of the property at ground level, but we can see from this aerial shot that it is very much buried in the woods. Planning permission was granted for a replacement dwelling and detached garage. The approval included the removal of permitted development rights under classes A to E. The original building had full permitted development rights and the replacement dwelling is no larger than the original building. The inspector therefore took the view that the exercise of permitted development rights for the new house would not increase the adverse impact on the character and openness of the open countryside. On this observation alone, the inspector is not persuaded that the council has clearly justified the imposition of the condition. From the site visit, the inspector saw that the plot was relatively large and well screened from public views. The appellant describes the development as one that is within a secluded and generous plot a description that is not disputed by the council. As it was not a sensitive location in the open countryside, the inspector did not consider the condition to be reasonable or necessary. In the absence of any justification for the condition, the appeal was allowed. That's it for this video. Please like or subscribe if you'd like to support this channel. And next week, I'm looking at properties located in the national parks. Thanks for watching. See you next week.